we just got a new report uh, from the town uh, of Port Hope uh, that Loyalist College is uh, using the old uh, St. Mary's uh, Catholic Elementary School building on Pine Street uh, and using that building as their new campus, uh, which classes will start in fall 2023. So what's going on is... Uh, Loyalist College uh, announced uh, just this week on Tuesday that uh, they're planning on welcoming students to a new campus, uh, which will be on Pine Street. Uh. Which they will are saying uh, is an essential pathway for learners of all ages to uh, pursue life-changing uh, educational opportunities within their community. Loyalist College Port Hope is now accepting international applications in business, computer systems, technician, and global project management programs and will be begin accepting domestic applications in uh, early October. So they're currently accepting them right now. And class will begin next year in September. This will bring in an advantage uh, for the town. Uh, uh, as uh, businesses will uh, could uh, make money of what the students uh, will uh, possibly come and uh, buy stuff from uh, us or see what the town has uh, to offer and we do have some uh, nice stuff around and Ganarasco River is pretty nice and we do have some nice parks and if they like to fish uh, we're also a good fishing spot as well The people who have shown up the announcement for this uh, Loyalist College Acting President uh, Mark uh, Kirkpatrick, uh, current mayor of uh, Port of uh, Bob Sanderson, former uh, Loyalist College President uh, Dr. Anne Marie Vaughn, and uh, MPP David Piscini for the Northumberland Peterborough South. Uh, area all showed up and made the announcement the new campus will uh, offer uh, loyalists a signature caring inclusive learning and working environment hands-on training and new industry connections on the site of the former st mary's elementary school in downtown porto the college will welcome uh, 120 uh, students at the Port of uh, Campus in 2023 and increasing uh, to over 400 by 2026 as they plan to. Mayor Bob Sanderson says a new Loyalist uh, College uh, campus uh, signals that Port of is a place for opportunity and growth. We're th thrilled that uh, Loyalist uh, College is uh, building on a success they have established since offering the uh, programming and uh, Port Open 2017. Their presence in the municipality brings uh, scores of benefits to the downtown and the whole community and uh, we commend Loyalist College for their forward-thinking approach to uh, delivering a post-secondary education to Port Open and Northumberland County. So, they actually do have a building, a uh, campus, uh, and downtown Port Hope, uh, yet it's just like one uh, building, uh, and uh, they just rent uh, one of the businesses downtown, uh, and it's uh, pretty small. And they only offer like one or two classes in it and uh, at that campus and and 
it's just uh, surrounded by a whole bunch of like clothing stores or uh, they also we also have like a law office uh, down there and so just full of like businesses and uh, and then there's just one business uh, that happens to be uh, where L'Oreal this college uh, is and that's not very recognized uh, you have to be literally driving uh, into uh, downtown Port Hope and actually see it for yourself that you it's pretty small so uh, now the new main campus uh, in Port Hope uh, will uh, get more recognition because when people uh, think of Loyalist College, they'll, they'll mostly think about the ones over in uh, Belleville, which is like uh, sort of a larger uh, town city uh, over in uh, eastern uh, east of uh, Port Oak, which is uh, very close to uh, Kingston, Ontario. And that is like the, one of the main campuses like over there. And uh, Port of One is like one of the very, uh, really small ones and not really recognized. So one thing they haven't mentioned uh, is uh, residences. Uh, because uh, people are going to be coming from uh, all across the world or if they are planning to and uh, depending on the course they are taking, uh, if they choose to, they're mostly going to pick other uh, colleges uh, or universities. Uh. And even uh, people in Ontario, which they live far away. Maybe they're uh, from Toronto or west of Toronto, like southwestern Ontario, maybe eastern Ontario or uh, up north. Or from the Ottawa area. It's going to be pretty far. And they're going to have to stay in the residence. If they're not from the local area, from the Northumberland, they have to. Uh... And we have like no uh, public transit coming in. Uh... Although uh, Go Transit did say uh, they are coming to uh, Port Hope and Coburg. But that's going to happen like in 2025 or as they are planning to. They did have, they did a test run, but that's going to like really uh, take a while and we'll actually see a bus connection if they are actually going to happen. Which uh, we'll actually actually uh, have to uh, think about it. And just up the street from uh, that new uh, campus that they're going to like use up, uh, they have uh, like a Chinese uh, sort of a private school. Uh, so that could sort of be an advantage for them as well. So it's like people like from China, they just come over uh, and do their education over there and then just go back to China and uh, use that in or do some uh, business over here and uh, learn some new skills. Uh. I have seen some students uh, from that uh, private Chinese, uh, apparently it's called the Cambridge or something like that, so the, you know, people think it's all special. So as a per, former alum of, uh, of the St. Mary's uh, Catholic Elementary School, uh, until they uh, closed it in around like 2008 or 2009. And they just combined the school and they just sent all the students uh, over. So uh, they're over in St. Anthony's right now. Uh, so it's just like sort of like, just like a three minute drive off the street. Students are going to have to uh, be in residence since so uh, 
there is like sort of like uh, where it used to be like a playground area and there was like a also like a they also had like the sort of like monkey bars or like slides and such sort of in the back area so that area could be used uh, for like a uh, residences uh or some other uh, office buildings or they could expand the campus to, to there and use some uh Although it's uh, fairly small, I will admit. So they need to work on uh, also having like a reasonable uh, residence uh, spots. Because they can't just like plan it out like that. And what about parking? So, students who are attending uh, or getting picked up or dropped off at uh, elementary school at, at that time, that it was like just uh, across the street uh, on Pine Street. Uh, there were like sort of uh, parking lots that uh, shared that uh, with that uh, local church. Um, Which is just up the street from uh, downtown and very close. We had to uh, share the parking lot with them, and also there was a lawn bowling club. I think they closed up. I haven't seen anyone uh, doing lawn bowling these days, so. Someone needs to check. It was just all a uh, whole bunch of the overgrown with grass and nobody uh, even bothers to do it. So they could uh, just take over there or something. And also the college could, uh, if you actually wanted uh, students to come, they could actually uh, take over that area and make something over there in the uh, current uh, lawn bowling uh, area if they close uh, and use it for purposes for students uh, to uh, on their free time and not to get bored because Porto Pad doesn't really have as much uh, interesting stuff. Uh, you have to really get out of town to uh, and go to like another town or one of the big, bigger cities to actually have fun. And even as a poor resident, I will say that. So they're doing that. So they better like make something like that. Because there's a, at least a, a lot of more things that they need to planning and not just uh, we're opening a new campus because they have to like work on like uh, having a residences for the students to stay, if, especially if they live too far away and or parking and also and the parking area was uh, very limited and depending on uh, maybe if people are doing an event on uh, at the church uh, which they do do stuff at like Wednesday and Thursday night so that could also uh, be uh, affecting uh, some students uh, if they are if you're doing parking over there so And space is pretty limited, so that is the concern. So that's the disadvantage of uh, having a college in a really small town that consists of, all, of only like 16,000 uh, something residents. And of course, uh, colleges and universities, they will expand uh, every now and then, but they will have to work on uh, new stuff like 
residences and parking and other stuff, uh, activities that uh, students can do on their free time. And will it be actually worth it? So will this actually be an advantage uh, for part of uh, So whoever uh, comes to uh, the news campus uh, by next year, well, we welcome you.